Hello and welcome to another session of my Data Preparation for Data Science webinar. My name is Gerhard and I'm a book author and data scientist at SAS. Today we are going to focus on data quality of analytics and I will show you how you can quantify the effect of different lengths of data history in time series forecasting. Let's have a look at the outcome of my simulation studies and also take a look why you want to know this. What is the business background for understanding the effect of different lengths of the scenarios? In many cases, you encounter the fact that you would like to do time series forecasting. However, you at the moment only have a limited number of historic periods available. Then there's the question, should you wait for additional months to accumulate into the data or can you already start now with your analysis? Uh, in some cases, you also have some data available to get more data. It would mean that you have to run significant data management in order to get this data into a system. Is it worthwhile to do so or you should you just move with the actual data? And you would also like to know what is the best length of your available data history. Maybe there are time series where the entire length is even not that beneficial and forecast models would maybe run better if you use uh, a short time period. I have investigated this in simulation scenarios and I've built up a simulation environment in SAS. There I used 788 time series from different industries and I have analyzed different scenarios by increasing, decreasing the time history uh, in order to assess what is the outcome and what are the uh, effects on that. In order to have stable models, I, uh, for these scenarios, restricted the forecasting method to exponential smoothing. However, you could easily also extend this to more complicated models. Let's have a look on how the simulation procedure looks like. So you see that uh, I have gradually increased the number of available time histories, as you see it here. So I've started uh, having just one month available, two months available, and I've increased this up to 48 months of available data history. The forecast results I've always evaluated with the true uh, future data for the next 12 months in order to get uh, a good picture on how precise is my model based on a certain history of uh, available uh, input data. I have iterated this procedure not only uh, for one few on the time uh, series data set, but I've also changed this and extended this uh, by shifting the, uh, the time window of my 48 months over the time series data set in order to avoid that we only uh, review a certain period or get stuck in a certain seasonal behavior which might bias our results. So having uh, performed this, this gives us now the chance to loop over our time series, our available data histories and our shifts in order to finally assess what is the outcome of different lengths of the, uh, of the data history. So our first business question would be how far should we remember back or more precisely uh, how long should our optimal uh, time series be uh, which we feed into our time series forecasting models. You see here a graph which will be populated now with a line chart where we see on the horizontal axis the available length of history in months ranging from uh, one month uh, uh, available up to 48 months and on the vertical axis we see the MAP, the error of the forecast um, and we would of course expect a, a course going down uh, the more time, uh, the more data history we have, uh, we, we would expect that the, the, the line goes down. Let's have a look how this looks like. So we see here the outcome for that and we find out that we have definitely the effect that we expected. It's a downward trend. And we also see that there is quite a, um, um, a shift 
after 12 months, for example, what we see here, and also after 24 and after 36 months. This means that we very clearly see that the time series model benefits a lot of having another full season, uh, being able to estimate another full seasonal cycle into the model, which definitely decreases the, uh, the, the correctness of our data, uh, of our forecast models. So having more available decreases the time series. We also see that this is not necessarily a linear, but rather, let's say, like an ex uh, exponential effect. And we can also study what does it mean on average to have more data available. This is a very valid outcome from the simulation scenarios. In my data quality of analytics book, I have run a couple of simulation scenarios on different business questions, and I've also outlined how you can calculate the business case here. So let's take a look at a certain company which uh, sells 10,000 products with on average 10,000 units per month. So this means 10 million units are sold per month, and our models on average have a MAPE, so an error rate of 15%, meaning that 1.5 million units are either over or under forecasted during a certain month. If we now say that uh, a lost profit when in under forecasting is $1 and then over forecasting uh, when you have excessive stock keeping costs is also $1, we see that uh, the change or the reduction of from 15 to 13% to 14% means that we could reduce uh, our, our uh, stock, keeping, uh, stock keeping cost or increase our profit. And this would in total uh, result in 1.2 million per year. What is now the effect for a scenario that we have just seen? When we are able to increase the uh, available data history, we see, for example, if we can move from um, a history which only is uh, has a length of uh, 12 uh, of uh, up to one and a half year, we have an average uh, MAP of 13.8 percent. If we're able to add 12 months on average on, on data to that, we see that our MAP goes down by approximately one percent, resulting in a marginal difference of. Uh, of uh, $54,000 compared to the previous line or on, in total to the, uh, to the baseline setup of uh, a profit of $334,000 if we only had six months available. So we see having more observations in our data history, of course, decreases the MAPE. However, we can also very easily calculate this as a business case. What does it mean to be compared to having only 12 months, 18 months available? How much do we earn from uh, collecting more data or putting more effort into data management? Let's finally have a look at a very similar business question. Namely, what is the best length of data history in time series forecasting? In the earlier use case, we have seen what is the benefit of having additional months of data history. But we also can assume that for some time series, it's not even that good to have a very long data history. Maybe they perform even better on a shorter uh, data history uh, because the old information from two or three years ago is not really beneficial in order to forecast the next 12, next 12 months. For example, in the fashion industry or when you have a lot of uh, changing customer behavior over time. So what we have here is we uh, have run the same scenario as before. However, now we query for each time se series what is the optimal data history which gives the smallest error for the next 12 months. So let's have a look on how this distribution looks like. So we see here a frequency uh, display in, in, in form of a bar chart ranging from uh, one month history on the left side 
up to 48 months history on the right side. And we see definitely there are many time series that, that benefit a lot if we have a longer time series. So the more data we have available, the better the time series gets. However, we also have to be aware that there are some time series where the uh, large amount of available data history for years is not so beneficial. They even do better when you only use uh, a shorter time history. They are able to make uh, a better forecast for the future. So this is a very good input when you run a time series forecasting that you should also iterate over these and uh, over your time series to see what is the optimal history which gives me the best forecast. I have published uh, such a macro with my data quality for analytics book and I've also made this macro available on my GitHub page and also published in SAS communities article which allows you to understand and to use the SAS macro to create a similar chart based on your data and find out what the optimal time series for your data is. In this webinar, we have focused on data quality for analytics and we have seen how you can use simulation scenarios to better understand the effect of the length of your time series on model accuracy. So we have looked on a data quality for analytics topic. In other webinars in this data preparation for data science series, we also look on data assembly or on feature generation to build the best possible models. This content is also focused in my data preparation for analytics, data quality for analytics and applying data science books in SAS Press. And with my webinars and with my articles, I also show how these topics are interlinked and uh, move into each other if you analyze them in more detail. More content can also be found in my Medium and LinkedIn articles and my YouTube webinars. You can uh, read uh, SAS related content in my SAS community articles and download the macros and the programs from GitHub. Thanks a lot for watching. I look forward to talk to you in a future webinar.